so yeah, then I just wanted to talk to you about how you kind of became involved with the uh, with the XM six one five kind of project, if you like, and you know how long have you been here? Have you been here since the beginning? No. <laughs> Let's go back to nineteen sixty seven. I in nineteen sixty seven I joined the RAF, well, partly to see the world. And my first operational posting after basic and trade training was on Hercules C one thirties down at Fairford. Wasn't there for very long uh, until I went on the fitters course back to Gosford. And then I was a fisher at the end of my fitters course, officially posted to Sealand as a maintenance unit. The thoughts of that I didn't like. <laughs> Someone else had been that was on the course, been a mechanic at Waddington and didn't want to go back there. So we swapped. <laughs> Having joined the Air Force to see the world, I then spent the next nine years at RF Waddington <laughs> working on Vulcans. <laughs> and my first two and a half to three years was out on the line, because at the time it was um, centralised servicing, so we were looking after all the aircraft, including 655. From there, I was sent on a course, a flight simulator course, to Newton. So I was travelling back and forwards each day. As soon as we moved to Waddington, we'd bought a bungalow at Washington. Mm. So, obviously it was okay to travel daily and claim mileage. <laughs> Don't forget the mileage. <laughs> <laughs> Then I was posted back to Waddington on the flight simulator. Well, I enjoyed flying the box. I mean, that was great fun. And we used to have to fly it for an hour every morning. Um, after it had had an hour for all the valves to warm up and all the operational amplifiers to be zeroed and such, right? <coughs> but as a job, it was awful. <laughs> Mainly because it was a small section with so many personality clashes you could not imagine. It came to a point where apparently they wanted a flight systems NCO, because I, I got my tapes by this time. Uh, they wanted an NCO in the hangar. And the guy who had been my trade boss on Centri servicing over my line knew I wasn't very happy in the simulator so he borrowed me and I went to Mias for second line servicing which was fine absolutely great um, whilst there I got borrowed to go on a sunspot to Malta with 9 squadron because they were short of a flight systems NCO. <laughs> you got borrowed a lot then. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I got back to Waddington that day, I came back, wandered over to the sheds just to say, hi guys, I'm back. And one said, your name was on orders. I thought, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> so I flew over to the, to the office, went down, found my name on SROs, Posted. Waddington. <laughs> 50 Squadron, no physical move. <laughs> so that was my fourth consecutive posting to RF Waddington. And I was back out on the line, which was what I'd actually asked for a last tour of duty on 50 Squadron, and I got it. Yeah. So happy. Of course, 50 Squadron has got the two dingoes on the tail. Always affectionately known on the squadron rather rudely as the shagging dingoes. <laughs> you may wish to edit that. <laughs> I think I'll leave it in. It's all good. Anyway, when I came out, I didn't go near an airfield, an air show, or anything for 30 years. And it was just coming up to my 30th anniversary of leaving. And Sitting at home one evening on Midlands today, I saw a clip 
of this aircraft doing a slow taxi with 558 over flying it. And when I saw this and I saw the dingoes on the tail, I immediately said to my wife, Good God, there's a 50 squadron bomber that can still move under its own steam. <laughs> I'm going to have to find out where that is. Well, it just so happened that we had friends coming over from New Zealand, ex-service friends, and I arranged to meet them at the air show at RF Waddington that year. Mm. Well, when we got there, I discovered there were quite a few faces that I knew, all arranged to meet at half past 12 at the beer tent nearest Sleaford Road. Maybe it's the A15. And I did say to Aunt about this, seeing this. And so I said, oh, that'll be 655 down at Wellsbourne. So the following Saturday, which would have been the second Saturday in July 2009, I came down here. Largely, because at the time I was thinking of setting up a website, we had our own web server at this point, setting up a website for 450 Squadron Ground Crew, which never actually happened and I wanted to photograph the dingoes on the tail and I've been coming down those Saturdays ever since <laughs> as it happens <laughs> oh brilliant so, so this is my 10th year wow. down here in fact. well congratulations yeah. I guess for getting back <laughs> into it because I imagine it must be quite odd sort of like I hear a lot of people sort of talk about how they come into it and they immediately remember where everything was and no matter how long it's been they just start going through the motions again was it very much like that for you definitely um our crew chief at the time was mark and having paid my sub straight off <laughs> joined <laughs> while i was down here because uh, i certainly didn't mind donating to the thing anyway mm -hmm. um he said would you like to go to the cockpit I said oh is that okay and he said yes I got halfway up the steps and I just went, oh, the smell, I'd forgotten the smell. 30 years have just fallen away instantly. Yeah. And I sat here and I said, oh, yeah, scanners there, RH8 camera, rad alt, um, CU595 offset box, double offset box, Decker Doppler, GPI 6, track control unit. He said, Bring your overalls next time you come down. <laughs> <laughs> and really, um, mind you, I'd, I'd, on that first visit, I realised I'd forgotten a lot. But by the, about the third time I was down here, it had just all come back. Mm. You know. So, and whereas I don't do that much in the way of maintenance on this aircraft anymore, largely because things aren't as supple as they used to be. <laughs> But if you want one or two little tales about Vulcans, while I was in Mias, I had a lad working for me, a rally. He was known as a very grey, but he was known as Big Rally. I'd actually met him as an LAC at Fairford and swapped shifts with him down at Fairford. And all of a sudden, I saw him again for the first time for goodness knows how many years. Larry was not the ideal airman by any stretch of the imagination. He wore a pulley with holes in it. He would arrive for an 8 o'clock start at 8.15. But once he got there, he was ready to go to work immediately. And if you gave him a job, he would work through smoke breaks, lunch times, you name it, he would just keep at it. He was a good worker. So I was fairly lax in the discipline front. <laughs> but Rory, by the time he'd been in the aircraft for five minutes, it smelt like a stable. <laughs> Fortunately, after the next five minutes, you got used to it. <laughs> and there was one time we were actually doing a mod to put in the autopilot reset switch, which means going down into the prone position. Mm. And we came in and there was someone stood on the steps between the seats. 
Rowy walks in, and slaps this guy on his backside, at which point the guy turns around and it was the wing commander. To which Rowy just sort of said, Oh, sorry, sir, didn't know it was you. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, from what I've seen of sort of video and things, it seems that the Vulcan crews especially had a special sort of camaraderie. And I imagine it's from being stuck in this kind of enclosed space together for such a long amount of time. You had to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't no. when you came in, you were when you no. left. But we had had one crew in particular, um, John Huggins' crew, and they they were I don't know they got better relationships with the ground crew than any other crew, definitely. Uh, at the time we had pig badgers. You've heard of the pig badger, of course. Um, and they used to put those on their flying suits, even though it was a ground crew badge. Yeah. Uh, you know where the pig comes from, do you? Uh, no, I don't know. Right. <laughs> well, it, when they were rebuilding the line huts, they moved us into a bell tent in winter. That was our accommodation. Well, and a group captain came round, group captain Hall, Des Hall, came round one day and he said they're living like pigs. At this point, pig and piglet of the week were invented <laughs> for outrageous behaviour. <laughs> right, one girl I can remember got Piglet of the Week by uh, streaking back Starkers from the wholesome jockey one night. <laughs> Amazing. 